Hello students, in this video we are going to discuss applications of biotechnology in the agriculture sector. First of all, what is biotechnology? It's a technology just like any other technology which we use to solve some of our problems. This is also one of them. But it makes use of bio. Bio means biology or the biological processes. So let's say we humans or animals or any plants or even any microorganisms. We will try to use their biological processes and make a product, make something which can solve our problems. And here we are specifically dealing with problems related to agriculture. So first of all, the core problem with agriculture that lies with us is how we can increase the production. See, if you look at the human population, it is continuously increasing. So the, right now the world population is somewhere around 8 billion and it is still increasing. So we have to ensure that we produce the food, we produce the food crops so that we can serve this population. We need to increase it. Also, we want to increase or enhance the qualitative aspect of it. So the food crops should be more nutritious. It should have the vitamins or minerals or whatever we need. So that's why we are now making use of biotechnology. But before, before the biotech, what other options we had? The first option was agrochemical based agriculture. So we started making use of some chemicals, some fertilizers to increase the food production. For example, if you have read about green revolution, how the green revolution took place? We brought some special seeds. Those seeds were called HYV seeds. Then we brought some fertilizers. And we made use of some pesticides. We also ensured that there is irrigation water supplies there. When we provided all of this, then we saw that in India, the food production increased substantially. For example, let's say in particular land, we saw one ton of wheat production. But after this green revolution, after bringing all these chemicals and all, the production from the same land became 2 tons, then later on it became 3 tons. So we have substantially increased the production. Good thing? Yes. Now this is about quantity. If we want to increase the quality of the food crops, we can go ahead with organic agriculture. Organic. Organic means natural. If you go ahead with the agriculture practice, wherein you are making use of the natural process, you are not putting any chemical, any pesticide as such. All the input that you will provide to the agriculture will be part of the natural process. For example, you will put compost, you will put manure, you will not use chemicals and all. So here we see this organic agriculture will provide us with a good quality of food crops. So these two options we had. Now the third option that we have is of making use of biotechnology. Using biotechnology, we can bring in genetically modified crops. What we do is that we change the genes of the crops itself. So the plant which has its own DNA, just like we have our DNA. In that DNA, there are some genes and we will make changes in the genes so that we can either increase the food production or we can make changes in the quality of the food crop. This is how we are going to deal with it. Okay. Now, moving ahead. How we started making use of biotechnology. Before moving ahead with genetically modified crops, we earlier started using biotechnology in basic terms. So, first of all, we developed tissue culture. Now, how tissue culture works in a very simple way. So, if you look at any plant, plants have a special ability. That ability is called as Totipotency. Now this totipotency means if you take any cell of a plant, any cell, a small cell if you take, you can develop entire plant from that particular cell. See, this is the speciality of plant. You cannot do the same thing in humans. If you take one cell from my hand and you want to develop entire human being, it is not possible. But in case of plants, it is possible. This is called as totipotency. Now we will make use of this totipotency, the same biological process to develop a technology. What we do, we take one small part of a plant. That small part is called as X plant. And this X plant, the small part of a plant, we will take to the laboratory. In the laboratory, 
we will provide whatever nutrients this plant requires this small x plant requires so whatever nutrients vitamins or the environment atmosphere whatever is required we will provide it in the laboratory and after that this small part of that plant now will grow into entire plant so this is the process of what we call as tissue culture so from a cell we develop an entire tissue or entire organ or the entire organism and this is the process called tissue culture now if we if we understand tissue culture if we make use of tissue culture and start developing lots of plants then that method is called as micro propagation micro means small because we have made use of small part of the plant and propagation means growing so using small part of the plant we have started growing so many plants and entire plant and lot of plants that's why we are calling it micro propagation so this is the use of biotechnology wherein we developed a method called tissue culture clear first method is clear now look at the second sometimes we see that some plants have some problem for example they have got infected by some pests or some insects so let's say some insects have attacked a particular plant so it has got infected let's say there is a virus which has been introduced in this plant now slowly slowly entire plant will get destroyed so how can you grow plant which is of good quality so you can do one thing you can remove all the parts you can specifically take one part of that plant that part is called as meristem now this meristem is very famous why because it is the growing part of this plant now when you take meristem it will not have that virus virus has infected the plant but meristem is not infected and you will grow this meristem in your laboratory just like what we did in the tissue culture similarly we will grow this meristem in the laboratory and again we will have an an entire plant and this plant will not be infected by that virus so here we have changed the quality of that plant or the food crop so it's a good method which we can use second method is done now we have third method this is called somatic hybridization now let's say we have potato and we have tomato and now i want that i want a new product a new food crop which has characteristics of both potato and tomato it should look red just like tomato it should be it's tasting bit sweet just like tomato but it should be hard it should have starch content in it just like potato so if i want such a new product a hybridized product i can make use of biotechnology wherein what i'll do is that i will take one cell from the potato another cell from the tomato and i will hybridize these two cells so hybridize and i'll make one new cell out of it and again i can grow entire plant from a single cell using this totipotency again and this is what we call as somatic hybridization so this is how we are making use of biotechnology to make changes in the process of growing plants either we are increasing the food production or we are changing the qualitative aspect of that particular food crop right now this is just basic later on we started working on a new concept called as genetic modification genetic modification simply means we will get this dna of a particular plant or animal or anything in this dna there are some genes and we will modify those genes either we will add some genes new genes or we will remove some genes we will make any change let's say for example if you look at me i have black hair those black hair are due to the genes that are present in my dna which say that my hair should be black so all the information is stored in those genes now if you add another gene which shows that the hair should be of color yellow if you add it into my dna if you make changes in my dna that is genetic modification if you do then my hair will also become yellow this is the simple biotechnological thing now using this same method what we'll do is we'll make changes in the food crops or food plants what we'll do 
we have seen sometimes because of drought because of cold because of salt or heat all these things sometimes destroy our plants sometimes let's say for example if you look at a region called marathwada in maharashtra there always there is drought condition there is lack of water and because of lack of water you cannot grow much plants so now you can make changes in the dna or genes of that particular plant so that it can even grow when there is no much water supply available or in case there is a plant which only grows in a warm condition and if you want to grow that plant in the himalayan region or in a region where there is cold environment so you can make changes in the genes so that it becomes tolerant to the cold or drought or any such thing so nowadays we are observing a phenomena of climate change our climate is continuously changing so at this moment we actually need such food crops which are tolerant towards such drastic changes this can be done using this biotechnology second we can improve the quality we can improve the nutritional quality of a food crop let's say we have rice but the rice does not give us vitamin a so we can do one thing we can add vitamin a in this particular rice so if you read about golden rice it is very famous because we have genetically made some changes in it and we have added this vitamin a in this particular rice this can be done very good for us then apart from this we can also make our plants pest resistant we said that many insects many pests attack our food crops and many times farmers start crying they say that our food crops have been destroyed because of this pests or these insects what you can do whichever pest is there let's say there is one insect a specific insect na insect a that attacks our crop you can make changes in the dna of this crop so that it will generate some toxin some toxin which can kill this particular insect so if that insect attacks this plant then the insect itself will die now what will happen no insect will either attack or they will not do anything or they will not destroy our food crops a very good idea again now one of the best example if i can give for this pest resistance is the example of bt cotton or bt corn you must have heard about bt cotton so earlier we used to grow cotton but cotton used to be attacked by a special insect called ballworm they used to attack it so now what we did we made some changes in the dna of cotton we saw that there is a bacteria that bacteria is named as bacillus thuringiensis it's a very famous bacteria now this bacteria actually produces a toxin and we saw that using this toxin we can kill this ballworm so what we did we took one particular gene from this bacteria and we added that into our cotton plant so we made changes in the dna of this cotton plant added this particular gene now what this plant will do it will also generate a toxin which can kill this ballworm so we can specifically decide which insect we want to kill so for example we have this specific gene called cry1 ac or cry2 ab these are specific genes if you add them in the cotton plant they can directly kill these ballworms they will not kill any other insect they will only kill these ballworms this is how you can do genetic modification or we can call genetic engineering clear the same example applies for the bt corn also just like bt cotton i hope you understand genetic modification now apart from this mechanism we can make use of a special method called rna i method i means interference interference now again it is a kind of genetic modification which we are doing but we are making use of a special method what we do we observe that let's say for example we have a tobacco plant okay now there is a special insect which is called as nematode which attacks the roots of this tobacco plant which is normal phenomena but because it attacks this tobacco plant the tobacco plant cannot produce what it wants to produce and it gets destroyed so what this particular nematode does the name of this nematode is melidogeny this nematode 
attacks the roots and produces a special protein and that protein contains some harmful toxins so it is containing some toxins which is destroying this tobacco plant now we want that our tobacco plant should survive so what we will do we will do one thing whenever we see genes everyone has genes but we can silence this gene silence means see my one of the gene in my body will say that we want to make the hair black but if the gene is silented it has been stopped from working then my hair will not become black the point is you can make the genes silent or the process in which the process actually goes on is you have your dna from dna you will make your rna from rna you will generate protein but if i stop this process over here from rna if i do not let it generate that protein that process is called as silencing or what we are doing is we are interfering in the process of rna this method is called as as rna i rna interference so what we will do this nematode is using its rna it is producing a protein and that protein is very toxic for us so we will make changes in the dna of top this particular tobacco plant what we'll do in this tobacco plant's dna we will make some changes and after this change what it will do is it will silence the process of this particular insect or nematode what it will do when it is going to generate this protein it will not let it do this thing it has stopped or silence the gene of this particular nematode so what will happen it will not generate this toxin and that's why the tobacco plant will survive so this is the method called rnai rna interference method so these are all the applications you can see of biotechnology in the field of agriculture and we are producing more crops we are increasing the quality we are protecting them from pests and the harsh conditions i hope you understood thank you so much